The developers just released some huge information about the future of the game, which includes six star commanders, changes to the free healing system that I've definitely got some thoughts on, and updates about season two. So stick around in this video for the Q&A with the developers, where they share some big updates about the future of the game. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming. I care a lot about the future direction of the game. So in this video, we're going to very critically evaluate the developer feedback that they just shared. And this comes from this perspective of actually having done probably the most fighting of any server in the game up till this point. So I've got a lot of thoughts about what they're going to share about the future of the game and specifically the way that healing is going to work. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with the First question in the Q&A, what sort of gameplay will the new season bring? We are all wondering this. And will we have to explore the mist again? God, I hope not. I mean, look, it just takes too long. It's way too tedious. We're currently going all in on preparations for the new season, entitled Stars Reignited. I think that's cool. We're more than happy to share some of the upcoming changes with you. These include brand new village occupation features, which I don't know what that means, but presumably that's related to the buffs you get from getting a village when your alliance builds over that territory. Changes to the pass system, which is certainly concerning. I feel like passes are a good thing, but the fact that only, you know, one alliance at a time can go through is kind of annoying. Adding a sixth star to hero star ratings, which is a big deal. Adding higher level resource points. Hallelujah, bro. Let me tell you something. Zone 1 with those level 1, 2, 3 resource nodes was really, really unnecessarily painful. And behemoths and more. We think uh, this new season will really enhance the strategic experience, but due to time constraints, the new season has reduced the number of outlying regions on the map. We believe this change to the map layout will bring a new dimension to Alliance strategies. Okay. Um, and for this next season, there won't be any need to explore the mist. Hallelujah, praise be. Camps and supplies will be reset and available for you to claim once more. Cool. On top of this, we're also working on an all-new season with a new map and new storyline. That new season should come online in Q3 of this year. So, you know, I have a bunch of thoughts here. First of all, six-star heroes. They have them in Rise of Kingdoms, which is the predecessor to this game, the spiritual um, successor or predecessor to this game. Um, and they don't have them here. So what will they do? Well, in Rise of Kingdoms, getting more stars or onto your heroes would give you more talent points. So in this game, um, you're unlocking skills, but in Rise of Kingdoms, you get five more talent points and then 10 more talent points. I mean, let me tell you. Ooh, you could do some crazy things with 15 more talent points. Technically, you could go all the way to the end of one of these trees. So if you get an additional 15 talent points, that would be 5 talent points at 5 stars and 10 talent points at 6 stars. That would be a big deal. In um, the Rise of Kingdoms universe, you need to be level 40 in order to get to 5 stars and level 60, uh, sorry, level 50 to get to 6 stars. So we'll see if that works the sort of same way in Call of Dragons. I expect that it will. And I think this will open up some really awesome possibilities for how to build heroes in the future. And I actually think that's really, really exciting. Um, regarding the passes, you can see in our battle where we did, in fact, win in Zone 3, um, which, by the way, I'll, I'll talk about in other videos, but we had just a really great battle with the Dragon family. Um, only one alliance at a time can own the pass. Which is annoying, what we did when we opened the pass here is we take the pass, drop our flag, BDK took the pass, they dropped a fort, because you have to have a road connected in order to drop a fort, then BDM takes the pass and they drop a fort. So it's kind of a complex operation to get three alliances into the zone. Technically, to get two alliances into the zone... You could do uh, what the Dragon family did here, which is one alliance owns the pass and the other does a river hop. And then you don't have to trade the pass. Although, you know, anytime those players want to get in the zone, they have to be teleported into the zone. Um, it's very much a pain in the butt. You can't trade the pass back and forth. When you trade the pass, 
all your territory goes inactive and those cities can get zeroed, which doesn't matter too much at the start of the pass opening. But at some point, even though we marked it in all our family alliances, we we actually garrisoned the pass with troops because it was it would have been so devastating if our territory disconnected mid fight and people were getting zeroed. Um, so all that to say they're changing the way passes work, which my hope here is they're making it so that you can have multiple alliances go through the pass. Like you can designate other alliances that share passes with you. I don't know. I don't know what they could change to, to, I don't know what they would want to change about passes. Maybe they're changing the location of them. Maybe they're changing the sequence of them. Like for example, I would love the sequence of the passes to basically be um, something more like a KVK from Rise of Kingdoms where zone ones don't get to fight each other. You go from zone ones to zone twos and maybe you fight in zone two and then zone twos to zone threes. Um, instead today your zone ones connect and you could actually wipe out your enemies before they've even gotten to zone two and you basically farm for the rest of the season, which feels like a big L to me. So all that to say, I am very curious to see what the heck they're doing with passes. Um, very interesting here. The sixth star I love the village occupation I think is cool. Um, and behemoths are obviously, obviously awesome. So let's go to the next thing here. Why are some aspects of gameplay being reset in the new season? Um, and I have a strong feeling about this and a strong answer, but theirs is our original intention was to reduce disparity between players, increase fairness, and encourage interaction between alliances and avoid a scenario where the strongest players continue to dominate. They say get stronger, but I would say dominate and destroy. And here is why season resets are good, okay? I get that people don't love that their hero levels are reset, that their dust levels are reset on their artifacts. But the reason it's a good thing is that in a new season, a whale is just as limited as you are with what heroes they can work with. And that's a good thing. Imagine if you have to fight a whale at the start of a new season and they have all level 60 heroes, all max dust artifacts. That is a very difficult fight compared to if they have one hero at level 50 and you have one hero at level 50, you know, or like they've got three and you've got three. Okay, well, pound for pound, that hurts them more than it hurts you. So it's an anti-whale mechanic that I think is extremely good, okay? So they say, as players explore, fight, and grow, disparities between players uh, begins to form due to the fact that some players are able to spend more time playing the game than others. Yeah, I mean, that's not a bad thing. That is a good thing. Games with grind is basically a good thing. Um, this leads to a winner-takes-all situation, making the game less fun for weaker players and alliances. So... Um, it is, I suppose, a little bit anti-casual, I guess. Um, resets are an important part of our approach. Of course, it is also true that resets can be a temporary setback for some players as they have to get used to new alliances and new seasonal gameplay. A summary of uh, which gameplay aspects will be reset is available in the season overview in the Augur Stone. We recommend making preparations before season ends. So they kind of explain the intention and they are not saying they're changing it, which is good. I think the season resets are good. Look, you have to actually attend to the game. And in some ways, that kind of sucks. You can't play it as casually. On the flip side, you're rewarded for being attentive to the game. And as long as they don't make that super boring, as long as they make that interesting, fun, fast, and dynamic, hey, cool, man. I think that's a good thing. Um, will there be more opportunities to gain command points? Ah, uh, hmm. Of course you would want more CP. We all do. <laughs> that means more speed ups, more resources, more of all kinds of stuff. We totally understand that players need to spend a large amount of CP to gain hero experience and level up their heroes. However, increasing the availability of CP would put further pressure on players and could lead to greater disparities, which it would. Um, for this reason, we're approaching this issue with caution. At the same time, we're planning to change how hero experience can be earned in the next season. Um, after a hero reaches level 50, they will no longer be able to gain experience through peacekeeping battles. Instead, they will need to gain experience through methods that cost stamina. I am not sure I like that change. Um, and look, I love the game, and I just I want the game to thrive, which is why I worry about that. Um, what that basically means is you'll have to fight other players to gain experience. And the weirdness there is that weak players will get clapped. They're going to get wrecked. How's a weak player supposed to get over level 50? Instead, they will gain XP uh, through methods that cost stamina. We'll keep a close eye on feedback regarding this change. Um, The question is, I want to make sure that my alliance members are active players. Will you make it possible to view the amount of time a player has spent offline and the last time they logged in? 
And they say, we fully understand that Alliance leaders would like to be able to judge their members' activity by looking at their offline time and their last login and to use activity as a metric for members in order to improve the Alliance's overall development. However, players across the globe have different play habits, and protecting our players' personal data is extremely important. In order to prevent overly harsh styles of alliance management, we have no plans to make this kind of information fully available. Honestly, I don't think it's overly harsh. I just think it's a, it's competitive. I, I honestly don't think it's overly harsh. I think it's like honestly kind of like 101 alliance management it is you need to know if your players are offline or online, right? Like you just need to know. You have to know. Um, and players will come up with their own ways to measure it. Uh, this is just a convenience thing. So it doesn't actually change the fact that players are measuring it. It only changes how easy it is to, for players to do it. Um, so I just think the convenience would be nice to have. We'll be introducing leaderboards that display daily changes in players' power and weekly merit totals. So this is basically the same thing. So, th so they're basically giving us the same thing. We hope this will help Alliance leaders to better judge members' activity and contributions while avoiding situations where, where players are judged to be inactive due to differences in global play habits. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> it's just approaching it in a different way. Um, next up, I'm concerned that our server will become inactive if no new players are able to join. Will Call of Dragons introduce a migration feature? And yes, they are in fact releasing a migration feature, which I will cover in a future video. Um, in version 1.0.15, we introduced this feature for players who finished at least two seasons. Many players are currently in their first season and ask for the ability to migrate However, considering server merging will take place after season one, um, we have no plans to enable migration for servers in season one. Enabling migration too early could negatively impact server merging. That said, if you have suggestions for cross-server gameplay, we're always happy to hear them. All right, I don't have strong thoughts on this one. Um, finishing at least two seasons could be fine um, if, if you're willing to soldier through it. The weirdness of this game is that you could kind of spend a lot of money and then be at war time and be stuck in a server that you don't want to be in. Um, but your only option is to just quit or start a new account, which is a little weird. Uh, but, I, but I also get that if people can just migrate out of a server, they can just leave mid fight and it really ruins the fight. So there's a weird balance that I think they're trying to strike and I appreciate why that's difficult. Um, from here, will you be adding a way to reduce the amount of time needed for free healing? Free healing is a major aspect of Call of Dragons, and I let me, I love it, and I wouldn't change a thing. It's so good, it needs literally no tweaking, no adjustment, no changes. It's so good, I would do nothing. They say, furthermore, we fully understand that players having the most trouble with the system are those who need access to a large number of units within a specific time frame. For example, players taking part in large-scale combat. Um, I feel really qualified to talk about this because I just spent days in a row in large-scale combat, okay? Long waits for free healing can lead to players being unable to participate in combat in time. And that's the point. You're not supposed to be able to run it down like a bozo in this game, and that's what makes this game so good. You actually have to be skillful. And if you're not skillful, get wrecked nerds. You get punished. And I think that's actually kind of cool okay so but what's happening so they say in response to this we're replacing free healing with elixir healing the new elixir item can be used to instantly heal units elixir can be obtained for free but it cannot be purchased or traded for elixir is produced by and stored in your hospitals over time your elixir production speed is determined by your hospital's level and your relevant policies you may have enacted but don't worry, it's essentially equivalent to your free heal speed. Your elixir storage limit will also vary depending on your season, so it's important to make plans to store and use optimally. Okay, so it could be fine depending on your elixir storage limit, but the way that healing will work is instead of how it goes today, where they're like, hey, here's your free healing per day, okay? Your hospital ca capacity is unlimited. My free healing per day is 487,135, okay? Um, instead of it being that, you get an amount of elixir per day, okay? And then there's a storage amount for a total elixir that you can possibly have. And this makes it so that you have a certain amount of elixir for a big fight, potentially. Um, I actually, you know, maybe I was overly harsh in judging this system because initially I don't think I understood that there would be a limit to the amount of elixir you can have. So how I will feel about this depends on how high that limit is for the amount of elixir you can store. Um, because he here's my fear. 
my fear is that um you know wales will have a huge elixir advantage because of the way that policies kind of work um let me explain the policies over here make it so that you get a percentage healing based on the number of troops that you have if the elixir works the same way um did you know that the total healing that a, a maxed out whale can have is two million troops a day two million troops a day bro of free healing currently that's how it works today okay um and that's based off the percentage based heals over here um where you've got the four percent of your troops that you get in free healing plus the three percent plus those the flat amounts which i noobishly didn't pick over here but correctly chose over here so all that to say if a whale is accumulating two million free heals a day in elixir and now they can have 10 million elixir or 20 million elixir saved up oh, i mean their troops become bottomless at that point their troops become bottomless you can't run them out of troops which like I guess you get to fight a lot more, but also I really like anti-whale mechanics because you have to you have to play skillfully. I, I just think it's cool. So I don't know. I guess it depends on how high the elixir cap is. This actually could be a really good change, depending on how high the elixir cap is. Um, but it also makes it potentially, again, depending on how high cap the cap is, that like right now free healing isn't bad. It's like it's like if somebody accidentally hits my gatherer, it's like really annoying. But also free healing covers it. Who cares? Whereas in the future, like, hey, it's using my elixir and my elixir is limited. I don't know. Actually, I, I am a lot more open to this system than I originally was at first reading. It all depends on the elixir cap. How much can you store for battle ahead of time? And how much advantage does a whale have over somebody else? And if there isn't an advantage, then actually it's kind of cool. Um, that This actually could be a really good change. Hmm. All right. Let me continue on. Currently, you can only create one character per server, so it's not possible to create a new character on the same server. Will you add the ability to delete characters? This I find really weird. Like, why would you delete a character in a server and make a new one? Like, what could you have done so wrong where you're like, wow, I just have to start over and forget all the value of the free progress I made. I want to start a new account in the same server. It doesn't make any sense to me. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. We're currently discussing the best way to handle this issue. Please keep an eye on future uh, announcements. Yeah, I mean, my answer to that one would be like, there's no reason to make a new account. Just continue forward with the one you have. I, I, I don't know what mistake you would have had to have made that would be so bad that you couldn't just, that you weren't just further along by virtue of continuing and making adjustments than, than starting all over again. I guess if you wanted to buy all the bundles or something, all the pop-ups and like, Put the tokens in some other hero but i just even that i just I, I don't know guys i can't figure it out um so that's the developer q a number one for call of dragons um initially i was actually really anxious about some of these changes but now i'm more eager for them than i think i had originally been in my initial take i must just be sleep deprived from battling uh in zone three for so long uh, as i mentioned our zone three battles are over but if you want to see the live streams where we were doing a ton of battling um, many, many sleepless nights. Card will be in the end screen for two crazy battles. Check them out. I think you'll really enjoy them.